Okay, and we still missing Amr. So if Amr. I need this. Julian Frank. Julian Frank. Julian Frank. Hi. I'll just give you visible cues since I don't have a way to talk to you. Thank you very much. So, uh, five minutes. Two. Great. Okay, so it will go this way. Frank, here with us, uh, knows the station very well. That's why he will do the voice check. And then we'll have Zahan asking your question. You know your question? Perfect. And then we'll go to Laura Calvo. Okay, then please come here. Then we'll have Maria. Please come here. Then we'll have Amr. And then we'll have Marina and Luis. Are you excited? Mm, yes. Yeah, quite excited. I, I'm, I'm too. I'm very excited too. Okay, uh, Melanie, you'll give me the cue on how many minutes do we have still left in the event. Huh? Okay, perfect. Right. And this is the control center in Houston that we can see in the picture. So please take your seat. Please take your seat quickly. So. Oh, this is your paper. No problem. I don't care. Maybe there Take are it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we see that the station <laughs> is now. I didn't see where it was. I will uh, give just the mic to Frank because he will be basically moderating the event, doing the voice check, and so I leave you alone with with Frank. Uh, maybe just a little bit of background information, what's uh, happening now on board of the, the space station, because we are sitting here all relaxed, but I'm sure that uh, Andre and Don are now preparing on their side. They have to set up the video camera, because of course, we see some people here from TV, we see some photographers, they have a sound man. Uh, this is a whole organization in the space station. You need to do all of that yourself. Huh? So you're the cameraman, you're the sound man, you're the uh, choreographer, you're the uh, executor at the end, you're the presenter. So uh, here we are a lot of people, but uh, this is one of the interesting parts as, a, as an astronaut, of course, that you can uh, do all these different functions and that uh, it's also one of the challenging parts uh, of course that uh, that you have to do all that so Andre and Don are for sure now doing all the checks with uh, also Houston uh, because on uh, before we actually go live with the event they check that the video is coming down well that the colors are good that the uh, the sound is well that uh, the video is not upside down or not crooked or whatever. So I th I'm sure that they are doing all these uh, checks uh, right now. And then once they are ready, uh, Houston will uh, transfer uh, the contact to here, to EAC, and then they will tell us that uh, EAC, we are ready for the in-flight call. Please call the space station. And uh, at that moment, they will connect me through this microphone, I think, with the ISS. And then we will also see Andre appearing there on the screen uh, over there. Andre and Don actually, because uh, Don is also in the in-flight call, which is uh, Don uh, Pettit uh, from uh, NASA. This is just internally EAC uh, to uh, announce people that there is an in-flight call because of course you're all interested to see Andre, but a lot of the people also here in the building that work here, uh, they also don't always see uh, their astronaut flying into space. So also for them, it's very interesting from time to time to see Andre floating. And you will see uh, Andre is uh, always smiling like hell. He is very happy to be in space station. So that's, uh, that's very good. You will see him smiling as hell again, I am I'm sure. 
we, uh, we see that Mission Control has an ATV model on the desk. Frank, do you see that? Oh, yeah, excellent. Uh, <laughs> yes, because ATV is docked to the, to the space station, so now they have their uh, ATV on their, on their desk in, uh, in NASA. It's, uh, it's really very nice. So now the guy should be uh, in the module. What you will see is the Destiny Lab. It's uh, the equivalent of the Columbus Laboratory on the American side. And the reason why we're doing this there is because there is, a, at the moment, a high definition quality. We can get this video from the US lab called Destiny. Yes, and we have two types of uh, video signals. The normal video signal, which is kind of a little bit blurry from time to time. It also looks a little bit spacey. Uh, on the other hand, when we have the HD definition video, it's really very highly quality uh, video. Uh, and uh, this would actually be good for the people that uh, believe that uh, there was not a uh, uh, that there was not uh, a real landing on the moon. Uh, because uh, if you would see the videos now from space station, you could also say, "Oh, but you see, they have done this in the studio, such high quality coming from space." So uh, it's uh, it's actually very interesting. Just for those who are doubting, there have been humans on the moon, eh? just, just to, for those who are doubting. There is not a complot theory out there. <laughs> and I just heard from uh, Melanie that they have a little bit of delay on the space station, so uh, we'll have a couple of more minutes. Uh, two, three, four, five, ten. Hmm? Ah, so they are waiting for confirmation. So this is something else that uh, happens a lot on, on space uh, station is that uh, things can go wrong from time to time, uh, not only uh, because of the, the crew or that... Uh, Station the Houston on two. Uh, are you ready for the event? We are, are ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Uh, Andre and uh, Don, uh, this is uh, ESA International Space Station. Uh, we are ready for the event. Uh, how do you read? Hi, Frank. Good to, uh, to hear your voice. And uh, hello at EAC, everybody. We can hear you loud and clear. And we have a great picture here, uh, Andre uh, and uh, Don. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. It's wonderful to see you all floating and smiling there in uh, in the space uh, station. Uh, the first question may be from, from my side. Uh, to all these people here in, in ESC that were here and they visited our Columbus uh, module and, and all kinds of things, and a lot of questions in microgravity. Can you demonstrate a little bit to us what it is microgravity? Well, actually we can, and uh, Don uh, prepared a great experiment, uh, which we will now demonstrate. I mean, this is all for science, so we really do some, some science uh, experiment here. So normally we let some things float, etc., but uh, now we're going to really uh, demonstrate uh, some uh, scientific uh, phenomenon. Okay, we all know that pendulums are a gravity machine and they need gravity to work. And I have an example here of a pendulum where we put a long spring on the end of the pendulum and the spring can replace the effect of gravity. Go ahead, give it a small perturbation. So now, this spring is giving a force that is 
like gravity for small angle displacement. And small angle displacement is where the sine of theta equals theta, and of course that's when theta is measured in radians. And so here, here we have an example where a pendulum, which simply will not work in gravity, you affix a spring to the end of it, and now all of a sudden it will work. And it works according to the pendulum equation where the period is mass independent, and it depends on the length of the pendulum. So that's one demonstration here in a weightless environment. But now, let me change the spring just a little bit, and we'll change the behavior of the pendulum. Now the spring, instead of pulling the pendulum uh, along its length, it's, perp it's perpendicular to the length, and that okay, hold on. Yep. And it's perpendicular to the length, and that changes the dynamics. It's no longer a pendulum with a pendulum equation. It's now a simple harmonic oscillator, and the the frequency or the period of vibration is now mass dependent. So. So th this was a simple demonstration. Well, it's uh, looking all a very fascinating, Don. That shows an apparatus that we're all familiar with on oh. Earth, a pendulum, but it won't work in a weightless environment. You add a spring force to it, and it becomes a pendulum again. But then you change the spring angle 90 degrees, and all of a sudden it changes its behavior, so it's a mass dependent period. It becomes a simple harmonic oscillator. Well, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, uh, demonstration that, that you have given uh, for things that only can work in uh, microgravity. And Zahn, I think you have the next question for Don. Sure. First, can I say that was just so cool. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Um, this is uh, Zahan Barmel from the YouTube team. Um, I have a question in two parts. Uh, part one, can you tell us what is the best thing about working on board the International Space Station? And part two, can you give us some uh, idea of what typical research you carry out on board the ISS? Well, the best thing is that uh, if you're normally uh, working in science, uh, then you, you, you're concentrating on one field. The nice thing of being an astronaut is that you do uh, research in all kinds of fields, and that's a, 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 a big variation, uh, which is new, the newest ideas. Uh, so that, that's a nice feeling that you're working. Uh, for example, one day you do a biology experiment. Uh, the next day uh, the, there's a combustion experiment done with a lot of combustion experiments, for example. Then you are a subject or an operator for a human physiology experiment. Uh, then there is something with, with, with Earth observation or even robotics. Uh, we have been uh, working with, uh, with Robonaut. So, so it's technology, it's life science, it's material science, and that is one of the very nice aspects of being an astronaut, to be in all these different fields. I guess this answers also the, 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 the second part of uh, the question straight away. Hello. Hello, my name is Laura Calvo. Uh, my question is, do plants undergo the yes, same... Yes, go ahead. Do plants undergo the same stress as humans do in space? Uh, plants and humans have significant different physiologies, and the environment on space station is designed for humans. And so plants don't necessarily do very well in this environment. They, they are under stress, 
but different kinds of stresses than what human beings have. And it's actually quite challenging to raise a plant in a weightless environment as, as I've been uh, 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 working on in some of my off-duty time. Now, you can design a complex piece of equipment which inside of the equipment provides the environment that is conducive for plants to grow. But if you just want plants to grow as the equivalent of a potted plant in the corner of a room, uh, that's uh, a tough thing to have uh, in a spacecraft. Hello, my name is Maria Vilas, and my question is how long could an astronaut stay on the ISS and respect a full health recovery back on Earth? Now, that's a very interesting question. Uh, people have been in space for a long time. Uh, a, a Russian doctor, Polyakov, uh, has been uh, in space in, in one go uh, more than a year, and, uh, and he was in good shape when he came back. Uh, we do a lot of effort to stay in shape, so we do sports every day to keep our muscles and bones in a, in a good condition. Now, of course, there is, the, there is some deterioration in weightlessness. You still have uh, some muscle atrophy, uh, some bone uh, mineral damage, Density loss, uh, and of course there's the radiation. Now, so far all the astronauts uh, uh, get back into normal shape. Although it takes a long time. For example, for the bones, it can take a very long time before your your bones uh, are back. Uh, the effects of radiation are cumulative, so that is something that you cannot uh, turn back. But this is not different than for people who work in certain areas on the ground uh, involving uh, radiation. So in general, with the help of all the medical people on the ground and the sports that we do. Uh, also, after flight, uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, things to get back in shape. All the astronauts get back in normal shape after the flight. Hello, my name is Amr Mohammed, and my question is, uh, what do you think about the future of space exploration? I mean, uh, space exploration is very expensive, and uh, with the current economic situations all over the world, I would like to know what's the future of my generation in space exploration. Good question. First off, space exploration compared to what we spend our money on socially in the form of governments is small. It, it's, a, it's a small amount of our social resources that we're currently devoting to space. Now, uh, my generation has forged out the current space program that you see, and of course there was a generation before me that uh, forged their version out. And what the future of space exploration will be for humans and robots is going to depend on you and what your generation decides that you want to do. So one of my favorite quotes is, the best is yet to be. And uh, that we will see with space exploration. And it will depend on what you and your generation decides that you want to make out of space exploring. Hello, my name is Marina Lopez and my question. In microgravity, the human body suffers some changes, but is it now what could happen to a pregnant woman and her baby in the pregnancy at the birth happening in microgravity? Very interesting question, uh, which I cannot give you the answer straight away because uh, we didn't have such a situation, luckily, uh, because uh, this is a strange environment and uh, we can uh, uh, not afford to do some kind of an experiment like this, uh, um, uh, at least uh, uh, with humans. So, because we know from uh, from lower vertebrate experiments that have been done that there is an effect of gravity on the development of embryos. So, so this, this might be something uh, uh, dangerous, uh, at least at the, the present time, 
for uh, for humans to uh, to try out. So this is something that maybe in the far future this might be uh, uh, an issue that is uh, the, that is getting important. But at the moment we don't do this with humans. Although the experiments with animals uh, are very interesting uh, because like with uh, what we do also with plants, we see it then also in uh, in the animal development that there is an effect of uh, of gravity. Uh, on the development of the cells. Now, this is interesting because the baby, uh, the embryo itself uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in inside the womb is, is actually floating. So you can compare it a bit uh, with microgravity in that sense. But apparently, t even on, uh, on those cells, gravity has an effect. Hi, my name is Luis Alvarez, and I wondered if there has been any discovery made in the ISS in the in microgravity conditions, which we use every day in our normal life. The benefits of science and technology uh, come slowly and incrementally. And these are endeavors that you work on over long periods of time, and over these long periods of time, you will see the benefit come out. And this applies to both science and engineering and technology development on Earth, as well as what we see here in space. And I think the, the best thing to say about, about the benefit of exploring space uh, can be from its effect on human beings, to be able to see our planet from a view outside of a planet looking in or looking down, and to be able to understand our place in our solar system and maybe even the universe. And I, th I think this is one of the, the most outreaching effects of human beings going into space. And I, I like to, to sum up the purpose or the value of exploration from a T.S. Eliot quote where uh, uh, he uh, paraphrases the value of exploration is to be able to go and when you come back you know you're, you're home for your first time. Great and thank you very much for all these uh, interesting questions. Hasehan, you have another question I think for the crew up there. I have, I have one more question. Um, so one of our goals running Space Lab is to showcase some of the best space and science related video content on our channel. And so my question for you is, uh, what is your favorite YouTube video? Well, that's an interesting one because there are so many uh, in, in all kind of fields. Uh, uh, the funny ones, uh, the, the interesting ones. Uh, there's a lot of nice uh, video tubes from uh, f f video films uh, from Don with uh, with all his, uh, his science experiments. I know very well that one of the first that I liked very much was uh, actually uh, something to do with nature, which was Battle at Kruger, uh, and uh, that was uh, very interesting, which I uh, watched a lot. But nowadays. Uh, the choice is so big that uh, it's it's uh, pretty impossible to uh, to mention a, s a special uh, a special film. From uh, this uh, discussion as well, does anybody in the room has a science-related question? Because it's really YouTube and science, and so anybody has a science-related question. Nobody dares to ask a question to the space station. Come on, guys, it's your chance. Once in, uh, okay, science-related question. Uh, yes, uh, hello, my name is Jaime Costa, and I'd like to ask uh, what can you hear from the ISS, if you can hear something, like some uh, uh, impact maybe on, on some uh, sort of uh, vibrations, I don't know. So yes, a good question related to all the noises that you hear on uh, ISS. Uh, that's well, well, inside station there's a lot of machinery. There are fans and motors and things like that. So you, you hear a lot of machinery kind of noises. But what's really amazing is to go in the Columbus module. <laughs> and and it, it's best to do this 
when it's uh, crew sleep time because everything's quiet, the lights are turned out, and you just sort of float in the Columbus module, and you can hear all this groaning and creaking and popping. It sounds like an old wooden sailing ship. Maybe, maybe what Columbus's ship might have sounded like. And, and you hear all this groaning and creaking and popping, and you wonder, what's making all of that noise? Because, uh, of course, we're surrounded by a near vacuum in space, and, and acoustical uh, propagation uh, won't go in a vacuum. So what's making that noise? And uh, Andre and I were talking about that. We're not sure, but we think it's a micrometeorite shielding on the outside of Columbus. It's designed a little differently than the rest of the station. And we think that it's groaning and creaking through thermal stress as it undergoes heating and cooling cycles with day and night. But we're not sure about that. Don and Andre, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, video conference live from space. I think uh, everybody here was excited to see you, was excited to listen to your answers to the interesting question. Can I hear a big cheer from the audience for Don and Andre? Thank you very much, and it's uh, always good to see smiling faces up there. I know you're always smiling, Andre, so thank you very much for all of this. Okay, that was great. Thank you very much, and it was a pleasure. Good luck with all the science. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Indeed, now we are at the end of the event. We might still see a little bit of uh, video or uh, communications going on, but you will see that now they will start wrapping up the cameras, uh, switching everything off. Uh, uh, they are still discussing a little bit uh, the science experiments there that they do, as you see. So I think it was very interesting uh, to have them uh, here live with us. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, very thoroughly your stay here at EAC today. Uh, learning about spaceflight, learning about science, learning about the training of astronauts, the medical support. And uh, I wish you all a very good career and future studies in science and uh, technology. Zahan, maybe you want to add some words at the end? Just to echo my thanks uh, for all of you uh, coming here today and taking part in this event. And just thank you again for just the wonderful people who entered this competition and I think who have inspired us all. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I would like uh, I would like to thank again all the schools that are participating in the in this day at ESC. If we could put up back the slide, please. This is all the schools that uh, are freeing their pupils to participate actually today in this uh, call to the space station and this special day at uh, EAC. I will not be able to quote all of them, but you want to? Just one final thing. Um, don't forget, later this year, sometime in September, is when we're going to actually send uh, and carry out the winning experiments, send them up to the space station 250 miles above the Earth and broadcast them live on YouTube, so stay tuned for that live stream, youtube.com forward slash space lab, so get excited. Thank you very much. Now we can have a group photo maybe for everyone and uh, maybe with our VIP guests just in front of the, of the panel, if you'd like. This is the moment to, to take a few photos and a few souvenirs from here. After that, you can pick up your poster and your pins on the, uh, at the reception.